Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Wrench. Right now, I've got the Laystern One build here, which is the first official Subaru swap engine bay. And I want to scan it. I'm going to use my Creality Raptor X. And I will say that it's been like a month between when I have last used it. And they have upgraded the firmware and the software on this thing. And it is like a hundred times better and easier to use. I had a lot of trouble using the blue light laser with my M2 MacBook Air, but it's killer now. Like it's working phenomenally well. So I've done kind of half the engine bay already just to make sure that it worked while I was doing this. Uh, I'm gonna take you guys with me on the other half and then into Fusion 360 so we can see what the thing actually looks like when it's scanned. <laughs> Before I jump into the next scan, look how awesome this first scan was. <laughs> look how good that is. It's like, it is just super detailed and phenomenal. So one weird thing is you see how like dark this top part is? Well, that's because I've got this shield in there and it just sort of represents as black. I may end up having to pull it out and put some of these reflective dots in and that will allow it to be like the full engine compartment. I probably should do that if I'm being honest. It uh, seems like it doesn't want to read the black well at all, which is obviously makes tons of sense. But I've gotten like basically this half of the engine compartment done. I will do this half and then I'll get underneath so I can really see like the underneath part of the engine mounts and things like that. So I can obviously start moving things around and get them where they need to be. Oh man, I keep having some issues keeping the scanner connected, which is a bummer. It's the only little niggle I've had so far is just the Wi-Fi being a little wonky and not staying connected. So now it's connected. Okay, here we go. Okay, well, it looks pretty good now. It says in insufficient markers, but once I bring it into the engine compartment and I can actually see all the markers. All right, check it out, bro. Here we go. Oh, now it's disconnected again. Come on, scanner. We were We were doing so good. We were so good and so easy for this first one. I'm not sure why I keep dropping the Wi-Fi signal. So this base basically gives you the Wi-Fi signal. Then you have this dongle that connects to your computer and that's how they communicate. For whatever reason, it's not staying communicated. It's just sort of giving me a spin, spin, spin. And it should go green and I'm just blinking blue. So even right now it says it's connected, but I'm not getting any laser light from it, which means it's about to disconnect again. Now I can wire myself in, which is what I'll probably end up doing if this doesn't eventually figure itself out. Oh, there we go. There's some laser light. Okay, there we are, everybody. Okay, there we are. And when I tell you this scan is just so much better than it used to be, what I need to do is stay in the green there where it's optimal, see right there. And I've done, like I said, half the engine compartment. So all I think I have to do here is do this this half and then I can sync them up. It's just faster and, and better. The whole thing is just better than it was. Way smoother. Like before I was getting like tracking lost errors every five seconds. Let me back off here, there we go. So I'm trying to keep the thing, you know, green to optimal basically. Which looks like that. And really the more times you stay in one spot, the more it figures out where you are and puts data points there. You know, the top side is gonna be, I would say relatively easy. And then it's really the underside that I need a lot of data on, but I wanted to just get a general sense of where everything was. And then you can combine scans, which is super cool. So I've really already gotten this part I'm going to cruise here and get this wall. I mean, it's just great. If you need to make brackets and have perfect idea where holes are, like this is such a perfect, amazing tool for the garage. Uh, let's get optimal. There we are. I, I am flabbergasted with how well this new software is scanning. Like it's just so much better than it was. I could use just a couple of more markers, but... 
I think I'm going to get everything I need out of this. So even if you don't have your screen in front of you, do you see how that button is sort of flashing on and off? You can keep yourself optimized by making sure that that button ring stays green. And so now it's like a little, oh, there's a little red. So if I, what if I back up? There we go. Now I'm in the green again. It's a little tight to hold the phone and scan, but pretty cool. So that was a drag. I just did, I don't know, 10 minutes of scanning and then it crashed and I didn't get any of it. It didn't save, which is a bummer. Come on, Creality. So I got to scan that whole thing over again. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this. I'm also going to add a few of these um, stickers to the engine mount. So I have like a really good example of the hole because I need to actually do that. So I'm going to kind of load the underside up a little bit. And then also in here, get a couple of more of these stickers because this interference is really important. Like to the Subaru engine, I really need to make sure that I'm not uh, hitting in a couple of spots that I actually have been hitting. So I have to make sure I accommodate that. And so round two. Okay, so I've pulled that little back pad, added a bunch more dots, a couple underneath, and then a few to this uh, engine mount on each side. And I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna kind of divide this into chunks. And the reason why is because if something happens, and I somehow lose the scan, I don't wanna to have to like redo the whole thing over again. So I think I'll probably do one from the outside like this. And then I'll get in and start doing kind of the underside and try to connect some of the stuff together. Basically the software itself will recognize the orientation of the dots and that's how it aligns itself. So I think that is probably gonna be best practice to just divide this into individual chunks. And then uh, we should be able to combine all of them in the software and get a really nice scan of everything. All right there, Benny. So I am just about finished with the underside. I kind of did this in two parts, basically. And I think I got everything I need here. Maybe this one little corner. Maybe this one little corner could go up a bit like this. getting kind of dim outside, which means you can really see the laser on the car, which is super cool. And, you know, I'm probably giving this more detail than I should, but since I'm kind of new at scanning, I just literally want to see how much detail I can get out of this thing. So in the scanning software, when it's green, it has basically everything it needs. So red is kind of like, all right, we made a good kind of first pass. And then the green is like, we got this. You know, we are pretty precise with what we've done here. So I'm just gonna kind of give this thing one more little sweep. So I think I have way more than I need, um, which is just basically to be able to size up, you know, different major mounting points for the engine cradle. So everything can be like fully designed in CAD and I don't have to worry about it. And uh, I think this will, net me a lot of future use, basically. So at the moment, I'm processing both of the scans. You can see that I've already done scan number one. And that thing's ready to rock. And then literally just using default settings to process scan number two. And then I think, can't remember how to do it, but I'm pretty sure that I can combine both of these into like one master scan. It'll hopefully fill out any of the blanks I have, and this will end up being one like really nice solid Porsche engine compartment scan. Well, I spoke too soon. I was at 83% processed and software crashed. So I think they've made a lot of advances with the scanning side, but maybe still a little bit buggy for the rest. So clicking on the scan, selecting it. I've got this scan. I've got this scan. This is scan number two. I process it, which is just literally the one-click process right here. Say yes, and then we'll let it do its thing again. And once that's processed, I should be able to mesh these things together. Now back to Drive to Survive. Okay, scan number two is done. And looking awesome. I mean, just for clarity, look at this. It's pretty crazy. If you need to make like an adapter plate or something that goes here, you got everything you need. So now, what do I do here? I think that I can select... This is kind of cool. So you can like 
basically turn the eyeballs on and off of what scan data you want to see. Like this is the mesh. This is the point cloud, which I'm not really sure that means, but then here's the mesh. Okay, so here is a little point cloud merge, which is over here. And then it's gonna ask me, I guess there's one and there's two and hit start. And now it's gonna merge to go, oh God, that was fast. And hit okay. Cool, huh? And then there is my engine compartment. Let's go. How cool is that, you guys? All right, boys, it's the next day. I've made quite a bit of progress. So here's my engine compartment. And then here's the engine. And you'll see I actually added a lot more detail into the adapter plate of this particular scan because the previous ones didn't really have enough. So I also added a little bit more detail in the engine mounts, which are there and there on the Subaru. Because it's really all I need is I need this point and I need these two points to build things off of for the kit. All right, and this is the final which is the engine inside the engine bay. And now I can make super precise measurements. Obviously I can see like, here's my mounting points down here. I can see underneath the engine if I flip this sucker around and I can look at, you know, the space I have between here and here. This one's obviously really tight over here. Almost perfectly aligned, could use a couple more millimeters, but. I can measure stuff in real life as well, but now I can see my engine mounts and pretty much all the mounting parts I need on this engine are now available. And that is the beauty of having this Creality Rafter X in the toolkit. So stoked about this. Now, I'm not very good at fusion, so I may outsource some of this other creation that I need to do, but super excited about how this thing turned out. So stoked to have this thing in the toolkit. You know, I mean, I think some version of a scanner should be in everybody's toolkit at this point because it's invaluable. You can just do all kinds of things between Creality and Fusion 360 or just Fusion now, I guess it's called, and using services like Send, Cut, Send or any number of laser cutting places online. It's just a really cool time to be a creator in the garage. Thank you guys for watching. You guys keep on rocking. We'll talk to you soon.